Let us all close our eyes for a moment with deep love. Let us think of God and Sri Gurudev and we'll chant Om three times together. I bow to all the divine incarnations and especially to Lord Krishna. I bow to Divine Mother. I bow to all the masters of all times and all places. I bow to beloved Gurudev. I bow to all of you. And I bow to the entire creation. Om Amen. It is by the grace of God and Sri Gurudev. We are here in this ashram and celebrating the 25th anniversary of this spiritual home, the temple of meditation. And today is the day which was officially celebrated as the day of inauguration. This year, coincidentally, today is the birthday of Lord Krishna. Because of the lunar calendar, it goes from today till tomorrow. And many even in India, if I ask, many Indians might not know, today is the birthday of Yoga Maya. You will ask, who is Yoga Maya? When Lord wanted to incarnate as Krishna, He invited Yoga Maya and told, you have to be incarnating with me. I will be born in the prison of Kamsa. You will be born in the home of Nanda and Yasoda. And we have to fulfill the wish. So there will be exchange of the baby. So I will be taken from the prison to the house of Nanda at midnight when everybody is sleeping. And you will be taken away from Nanda's home, keeping me there, and you will be brought to the prison. And the same thing happened. Kamsa, the evil king, and who was also the maternal uncle of Lord Krishna, coincidentally, and he knew that the eighth child of his sister will be cause of his death and found it is not a boy, it is a girl. I don't want to elaborate this story because only the reference, if you study 
दुर्गा सप्तशती चंडी देवी महात्म्य वी हाव हावर ओन पब्लिकेशन ओनली हर ग्रेस इन द थर्ड वॉल्यूम डिवाइन मदर इज फोरकास्टिंग आई विल बी बर्न इन द होम ऑफ नंदा एंड यशोदा इन फ्यूचर सो टुडे इज द डे सो मेनी डू नॉट नो इवीन वी सेलिब्रेट लॉर्ड क्रिसमस बार्थडे बट टुडे इज ऑल्सो डिवाइन मदर्स मैनिफेस्टेशन सो एंड टुडे वी ऑल हैव असेंबल्ड हियर फॉर दिस प्रोग्राम and the program is coming towards the end tomorrow by noon time or early afternoon the program is over gurudev said why do we celebrate functions he said we celebrate functions to realize that god is functioning within us without power of god ममय वंश जीव लोके ए पार्ट ऑफ डिविनिटी इज इन ईच वन ऑफ अस इन मी इन यू इन ऑल वी ऑल आर दैट पार्ट ऑफ द डिवाइन अनफर्चुनेटली वी फॉरगेट दैट वी आर डिवाइन वी बिलोंग टू गॉड वी हैव गॉड लाइक पोटेंशियलिटी ऑफ लव काइंडनेस एंड कंपैशन आउट ऑफ दिस फॉरगेटफुलनेस देन ईगो कम्स अप pride arrogance jealousy and all negative qualities come up that is why there is so much of trouble there is trouble in inner life there is trouble in family trouble in where we live together be together there is you can imagine what is happening in this europe at present and we know it how painful it is all ego nothing else ego however so we are celebrating functions gurudev said to know that god is functioning through us day and night breath to breath who is breathing within us it is not we who is looking through us it is not we who is speaking and listening through us it is not we if we remember this simple teaching of the masters do you know our life will change our attitude will change our behavior will change our life will change so it will have impact on others too so today is the day few things happened in this ashram in the evening after the program in a just like this there was the program exactly fire ceremony in the morning and program satsang like this after that gurudev was in his room the the wife of the indian ambassador was there so guru dev told you know i want a prayer the roses <laughs> i want to cut down some trees but she is unhappy and she was guru dev was pointing out the finger towards secretary is unhappy tree is unhappy like this she was telling and today is the day he agreed to write books on him before he did not like he did not like to write anything on him he really did not want his own publicity he was more you know the he loved to stay in the families he went and stayed in different families and in the family just like a family member i will tell one example it was in 1970s when 
Gurudeva's new invest. And not too many people knew him. And in New York, Gurudev asked one doctor, doctor disciple, Indian, can I stay at your home for a few days? He said, yes. Just now, he said, yes. And he took Gurudev just and took to his home and he was a new doctor doing his residency. At home, his wife with a baby daughter and the wife did not like the sadhus and all this. And he didn't know who, who this sadhu is. And came and to Gurudev, he said, Gurudev will stay here, I'm going to hospital. She was so unhappy. We have heard from her. She, she said, I was really upset. Who is this sadhu? Who is to? Gurudev understood her, said, Mother, don't be unhappy. So, with his word, the mother, don't be unhappy, she felt that as if my father or the grandfather, he's not no more a sadhu or a monk. Because many monks, you, you cannot touch the feet, you can go to, close to them, you have to do this, do that, lot of rules. So Guru, they have lived in Western families, in just like I told you in USA, in some Indian families, he lived like a family member. He took care of the you know, baby and she was cooking. And he worked like a babysitter. This is what Gurudev is. Gurudev was like a child with the children, was youthful with the young, was with the householder, behaved like a householder, with the monks as a monk, with the disciple as a guru. He was everything to everybody. He was like this. Gurudev, yes, he wanted ashrams and he came in 1970-74. As you heard before, his first ashram in Holland, it was in 1993, 19 years after his coming to West. So, like this is ashram and ashram life. However, he called me to Europe and with a very, how to say, lot of persuasion convincing me only for three months. So, I came only for three months. And to bring me to Vienna, the instrument was Christinema. And the Guru's plan worked. And he did not tell me that I am, he is planning me to stay here longer and longer. And so on. And that happened. When I left India, I told the disciples, friends and relatives, I'm going for three months, I'll come back. And I'm not going. So extension, extension, my visa was extended. Then residence permit and so on. And now we are ending up here. As we discussed, although the ashram started here officially on this date we are telling, but Gurudev came on 3rd August and stayed in this property before 3rd August, 3rd August. And before that our real ashram experiment started from Vienna, from behind Gase, regular meditation and so on. And programs, apart from programs in the city, our real ashram program started from Shooting Orgasi. Every month we had program, every month. Three days, four days program, 12 months, 12 programs. 
apart from some big program in the city. So real ashram life started from there and the oldest or eldest resident is Mangalanandji. And I don't know if anybody knows, I didn't write about this or speak about this. Few might know about this. One early morning Gurudev called me to his room in Behaim Gase. He told about my friends. He told in Bengali, Amar, there was a number. Sat Sakha. Sakha means friend. And among the friends, do you know how many are they here? Quite a few, I will not take, tell the name. Krishnama is one, Mangalayan is one, secretary is one. Like this Gurudev told my friends. <laughs> so, however, time has passed. If we look back 25 years, yes, but now we have to look forward. Look forward two things. First thing is, how am I? Here are quite a few. Those who have seen and lived with Gurudev from 1970s. Like Peter Baba. Like Joachim Baba, Har Harminama. And sitting here. And from early 80s, 90s, those who have quite a few, those who have seen Gurudev. And those who have not seen Gurudev also, for example, but they have got the teachings of Gurudev. So Gurudev is there through his teachings. My simple question to all of you, our number is not few. What is our change? Are we content with our inner change? Are we content? If not content, how can I grow up? How can I serve really Gurudev? Today I was reading Binova. I was telling that since, and today the book will be finished. Yesterday I could not finish, today will be finished. He's telling, Always develop the attitude to serve. And he is telling when I was in my early 20s, I came to Gandhi. I lived in his ashram 32 years of my prime life. I physically worked. He is telling what work he did. I cleaned the toilet every day. I worked in the garden, physical working for hours. I spinned cotton physically. I cooked in the kitchen. I cleaned the cooking pots. 32 years I did. He did all these works 32 years physically. Not just reading, teaching. No. It was very amazing to See that people lived like that and living, and in ancient Gurukula, that type of life they lived. When Krishna went and staying with his guru in Ujjain, his guru was Maharshi Sandipani, and he was working physically. Lord Rama, sir, his guru. Serving and learning, physical work. Physical work makes the body, you do know, makes the body and, and in our early days with Gurudev, we have also worked physically. Although I was not a, an official resident in ashram, I was a student, then I was, you know, you know, I had my own job, but I spent most of the time in ashram, 
and physically working, physically working in the garden, taking care of the cow shed, cleaning the cow shed, helping in the kitchen. Many times, weeks after weeks, I worked as a, I cooked, making ghee from milk and preparing yogurt and all this. I was working, physical work. Physical work is needed for everybody. So, however, we have to be, you know, good messenger of Kriya Yoga, messenger of spiritual life. I will tell one example. I got a telephone call from Peter Baba. Oh, you are going to start a center? Because in German language, ashram is center, centrum. It was the new first program in Frankfurt and the organizer telephoned Peter Baba telling that we are going to start and she told him we are going to start a center in Frankfurt. So Peter Baba asked me, are you going to start a center? I said, what is center? Because I didn't know so much of center, centrum all this. So ashram, I said, who told you? Yes. You come there and we'll have program there. So we went there, you know, for the program in Frankfurt, the first program, I think it is in 1995, September, October. What I was going to tell you, so I was going first time to Frankfurt. So I am flying from Vienna to Frankfurt. One Indian gentleman, Bengali person, has come to the airport. He's a long time disciple of Gurudev, which is no more. He knew me and he was to see me in the airport. And there was another lady who came from Berlin to receive me. So none of them knew each other. And both are waiting. You know, many people are waiting for people to come out. So, this Indian gentleman, elderly man, looking at this, you know, the, this mother, went to her, asked, are you waiting for Swamiji? She looked at him, he said, yes. How did you know me? Or why did you ask me? This is it not, not a story. This happened. Because I saw you are standing so calm and quiet, peaceful, and you are not looking this side, not looking that side, just, you know, in our Sambhavi. I thought surely you are meditating, surely you are waiting for Swamiji. So that is how they knew each other. When I came out, I wanted to introduce both of them and they said, we have already been introduced. We know each other. This is how a person could know another person without any formal introduction. Am I clear? The meaning is, our meditation will have impact on others. They will say that, here is the change in a person. I will tell another story. I was first time in stark cell in our Holland ashram, 1994 October. So after the noon meditation, I went out and you know the Holland ashram is beautiful. It is. So I went to walk. I love to sit at a particular place near that pond. So I sat down, one gentleman came, young man, he came. He asked me, can I sit near you? Sit down. I asked, where are you from? He said, from Switzerland. I said, how are you? He said, I'm good, but I have a lot of problem. So then, what is the problem? Then he said, I have family problem. He said, what is happening in the family problem? He said, 
I love to meditate. I, but my wife doesn't like meditation. And when I sit to meditate, switches on television loud, and cooks in the kitchen and smell, and makes my little daughter to go and to disturb me. Then I asked, okay, anything? No, no, it's like this. It is really, it is not going on well. Then I looked at him. I said, can I ask you one question? I said, yes. Can you tell me what do you do the whole day? Then he said he gets up early in the morning and he's finishing his little wash up and all this. He sits for meditation for hours, and then it is a time for to go and he gets hurry and and he runs. Pack up things and to go for work and like this and he, whatever he told the total time, his meditation and job, that's all. He doesn't think of his wife. He had a wife. He has a daughter, and he had family. He has to do something. Nothing. I said, do you know the problem is not with your wife. The problem is yours. He said, my problem. I said, yes. The wife feels that your so-called meditation, it's. Taking you away from her, from her daughter, from the family, and meditation is breaking the family. It is not. Then he paused for a moment. Then he said, "What should I do?" I said, "You go back from this time. You just spend more time with your wife. Let us go for shopping. Let us do this. Let, let I will take the child for a little walk. Find out some other time. Meditate a little less." Qualitative meditation, not to sit for hours, watching the breath, maintaining peacefulness. Kriya Yoga has a practical meditation day and night. Practice it. Then he said, "Okay, I'll try it." That was in October. In December first week, I think so. Yeah, December first week, we were in Munich. So we were three teachers for the program. Then after the lecture, we are coming down. Quite a lot of people, so I found the same young man sitting there. From Switzerland, he has come. I went, looked at him. How are you? How is your wife? He said she has come here. He said for what? For initiation. How could she come for initiation? No, no. What you told it is working. That's all. I don't want to tell more. If we change. Others will sense. If our behavior, we always look at others that she is doing this, she is doing this. No, I look at my behavior, my nature, my attitude, my way. I have to change it. But keeping my mind in God and Guru's. So time is over, I think. I have tossed the time. Because he is timeless, but I am. Do you know? I am very punctual. When I came to Holland, I said, "Peter Baba, wait, at what time the meditation?" He said, "This time meditation, but we can be five minutes." So I told Peter Baba, "It's it's Peter Baba. It's Peter." Was it? Spitter. So, because Peter looks at the condition of people. Okay, we'll. We then when I was new in Europe, when I was finding that this was the problem, people are not so punctual. I had an idea when before I came to Europe, I had an idea that people in West are very punctual. This was my idea. So. When I came here, I did, because in my personal life I was very punctual, from my childhood, so on. And when I, so I said, okay, so at what time is the lecture? They said lecture is suppose seven o'clock in the evening. I said, but it will start at seven fifteen. We can go a little late, no problem. I said, no, seven o'clock. I'll sit there in the front bench. I'll sit. At least anybody will come punctually will see that the teacher is there. We'll start seven fifteen, all right. But I'll be there seven o'clock. However, with that, we are now very punctual everywhere. I hope. 
So, I will tell you when I went to Greece. I went to Greece first time. Anybody from Greece here? Okay. I went to Greece. So, it was my first program. So, I was kept in a place. The hall is next. You can see through the window the hall. My room was there. So, I was told that 7 o'clock is the lecture. 7 o'clock, nobody. No organization, nothing. So, I was looking through the window. Nobody is there. Organizer came at 7.30. I asked, what, what time is the lecture? He said, we announced 7 o'clock, but it will, it will be 8 o'clock. <laughs> This was my first experience of Greece. <laughs> After the lecture, I told, tomorrow there is initiation. So, initiation is your time 7 o'clock, my time 8 o'clock. <laughs> your time 7 means you will come at 8. So, I pre the time one hour before. I told your time 7 o'clock, my time 8 o'clock, that will be initiation. But be very... So, So, nice experience, do you know? I miss that. Do you know what I miss? I miss going from center to center. When I was telling somebody, now we have pres our presence in 29 countries, in 110 cities. So, I was asked, have you gone to all these cities, all these places? I said, no. But during those days, it was hectic. But we, many places, if I tell Peter Baba and myself going to Poland, we didn't know who is the organizer. We landed. We were going to Krakow. Our plane landed in Katowice. The flight was to Krakow. Nothing, no announcement. So, however, so, then go to the places, unknown places, unknown people, even organizer is unknown. We have Peter Bhava's personal experience. I have also personal experience. We have collective experience. So going to a nice program everywhere. So going from place to place, staying with the people at their home, being in their family, it was, it was really, really, really nice experience. When I came to West, Gurudev told, now you have to stay here. You will stay, many things good, many things bad. <laughs> I thought, what bad to learn? He told me, <laughs> you will learn many things good, many things bad. Don't worry, I am with you. <laughs> However, he, he brought, brought me here, he left me here, he went back. Do you know, the day he left, the first, you know, first time I am here and he is leaving, he told me, no need for you to go to the airport. The program was going on in Vienna. Gurudev is going back. And I cannot go up to the airport. So I do not. I was behind Peter Baba. Peter Baba went to Gurudev to convince that I can go to the airport and because the meditation is in the evening. So there is nothing. So we can go to the airport and we'll come back. So because of Peter Baba, I, I could go up, up to the airport. If Peter Baba remembers that. I'll not tell more. So Peter Baba was, Peter Baba is, you do know, he became really like a guardian. Peter Baba was like guardian. Mama Miksham. Nisangaranji, she became like my mother. And do you know, there are two persons here. I have a special name for both of them. Do you know what is that? Once I wrote, 
one who is mother of my Gurudev, mother of my father is what to me? I showed to Krishna Deva. If one is mother of my father, I think if Krishna Deva remembers or she will verify if it is right or wrong, it was in US immigration and she was accompanying Gurudev and the immigration officer asked, who is he? Krishna Deva said, he is my father and he asked Gurudev, who is she? Gurudev said, she is my mother. <laughs> So, <laughs> and anybody will think either they are crazy or something. How can one tell that? <laughs> However, so I have two grandmothers here. So, two grandmothers sitting here. So, they all, I'll, I'll not tell this. Staying here, all of you, I'll not take the names directly, indirectly taken care of me and I have no words to appreciate. However, love is the element of spirituality, the fundamental element. And love is the sign of our own spiritual growth. How much love we have. We have discussed many times, it is easy to love a pet. But we might find difficult to love human. But loving each other shows that our real strength. Jesus said, love thy enemy. Love thy enemy. And in a practical way, Gandhi lived. Loving the enemy. So, however, let us live the life of love, life of joy, life of spiritual celebration. And somebody was telling, India is beautiful. I looked at and asked why. You have so many celebrations and it is true. And more celebration in villages. Oh God, unbelievable. So, and why can't we celebrate every day? And who tells you not to celebrate? We can make every day a celebration. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new opportunity. Everywhere we can celebrate. Thank you all for joining this celebration. And do you know, my I dream of Gurudev regularly. I love to dream. I, even this morning I dreamt. Early morning I dreamt of him. So, Guru is eternally present, it is true. His teachings are there, it is true. We have to live with his teaching and feel his presence and grow up. Thank you all. S month of September is nice. I think it is. Month of September, we have ashram here. Month of September, ashram in Miami, our mother center in USA. Month of September, ashram in Texas. So, month of September is very favorable for us. So, This is month of September. As I told you, when Gurudev was here, another thing I forgot, today is a special day. Today is the day when Gurudev, while discussing with me and Suddhananji in his room, others were there, but I don't know how much he was speaking in English or Bengali. Or... Today is the day he told to start the organization in India. And he told not to use his name. And he gave the name Pragyana Mission. And this was this evening. 
this was the evening. He, and not only that, he told who will be in the board. And I don't know where is, if there is a copy of that paper here or not. So there was a notary, notarized paper. It was, and he, he told us yeah. to make the, who will be in the board and all this. This was, all was done this evening. So this place. Not only this, this place has become the birthplace of hand in hand. This place is the birthplace of Pragna publication, all our publication. This is the birthplace from here. So many things from here. So it is, it has become a historic place. Many things. Thank you all. Joy Guru. Jorse Bolo Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Oh, I spoke in Hindi Jorse Bolo. Speak loudly. Jai Guru. Jai Guru.